আপনাদের সকলকে স্বাগত জানাই আমাদের আজকের অনুষ্ঠানে সবার জন্য রইল অনেক শুভেচ্ছা কানাডায় নির্মিত এবং টরন্টো থেকে প্রচারিত বাংলা টেলিভিশনের আজকের এই আয়োজন নিয়ে আপনাদের সাথে রয়েছি আমি নাজমা কাজী আশা করি আপনারা সবাই ভালো আছেন চলচ্চিত্রে রবীন্দ্রনাথের গান রবীন্দ্রসঙ্গীত শিল্পী সংস্থা কানাডার বিশেষ আয়োজন তিরিশে মে শনিবার সন্ধ্যা সাতটা স্থান এস ওয়াল্টার স্টিওয়ার্ড পাবলিক লাইব্রেরি অডিটোরিয়াম ওয়ান সেভেন্টি মেমোরিয়াল পার্ক অ্যাভিনিউ ইস্ট ইয়র্ক টরন্টো কক্সওয়েল অ্যান্ড মর্টেমার ইন্টারসেকশন পর্যাপ্ত ফ্রি পার্কিং এর ব্যবস্থা রয়েছে কানাডা প্রবাসী রবীন্দ্র সঙ্গীত শিল্পীদের পরিবেশনা শুভেচ্ছা দর্শনী দশ ডলার মাত্র বিধির বাঁধন কাটবে তুমি যোগাযোগ ফোর ওয়ান সিক্স এইট ফাইভ সিক্স ফাইভ এইট জিরো টু তিরিশে মে শনিবার সন্ধ্যা সাতটা চলচ্চিত্রে রবীন্দ্রনাথের গান নিয়ে রবীন্দ্রসঙ্গীত শিল্পী সংস্থা কানাডার বিশেষ আয়োজন প্রচার সহযোগী বাংলা টেলিভিশন কানাডা দর্শক অন্টারিওর প্রিমিয়ার ক্যাথলিন ওয়েন বাংলা টেলিভিশনের সাথে এক বিশেষ সাক্ষাৎকারে শিক্ষা কারিকুলামের হেলথ অ্যান্ড ফিজিক্যাল এডুকেশনের আসন্ন পরিবর্তন নিয়ে কথা বলেছেন আর সাক্ষাৎকারটি নিয়েছেন ফারহানা আজিম শিউলি of Bangla Television Canada's viewers, I'd like to thank you in the first place for your time. You're very welcome and uh, I wanted to say to all of your viewers thank you very much for being with us today. We all know, including our community people, that education, school, these are very key areas which are provided by the uh, provincial government to the people. But in recent months, our community people have been showing their constant uh, kind of concerns and they have been talking a lot about the changes in the health and physical education of the curriculum which is going to be implemented in the next fall. So at first place, uh, what are the major changes we would like to know from your side? I know it could be a little exhaustive to uh, describe but and furtherly, uh, why those changes were necessary uh, to include? So um, let me just say first of all that uh, you're right about education, uh, publicly funded education being one of the most important things that the provincial government does. And Ontario has a wonderful education system. In fact, people come from all over the world mm -hmm. to see how we run our very diverse uh, education system. Um, in terms of the changes, uh, the, the fact is that we have had uh, a health and physical education curriculum in place for decades and decades. Yeah. The, the last review of the, the last change uh, to the curriculum was made in 1998. So this curriculum that is in place is very out of date at this point. There need, there need to be changes. So um, the reason that we're making the changes is that it is out of date. And if you think 1998, there was no Facebook. Kids didn't have cell phones. They weren't on the internet all the time. So um, one of the things that we've had to do mm -hmm. is make changes that allow for that, allow for the kind of information that comes over the, the internet to keep kids safe. So those changes are very important. The other thing that um, we have done Done, is, which is the way curriculum is written uh, in all subject areas, is we experts have looked at the research, they've looked at the, uh, the information that's available, whether it's from public health officials or from academics or from the police, to, to get information about what 
What information do kids need? Um, we know, for example, I'll just give you an example. Mm -hmm. We know that children today enter puberty earlier than they did 20 or 30 years He's ago. Yeah. So um, boys and girls um, between the ages of 8 and 15, 8 and 14, any time in there, puberty can, uh, can be onset. Girls are a little bit younger than boys, but um, we know that children are entering puberty earlier. So we've had to move the information about body changes into somewhat earlier grades because the research shows us that, um, that kids need that information earlier. Those are the kinds of changes that we have made to allow for information to get to kids when they need it. Uh, yeah, uh, we are already aware about that the, the outdated curriculum, those kind of yeah. things. But in 2010, you tried it once, and within three or four days, it was like wrapped up for some obvious reasons, but this time it's again here on the table. So let me, let me just say that this, that um, in 2010 when it was introduced, yes, there was a, there was a, a, a fair bit of opposition um, and there was a call for more consultation. And so that's what we've done. We have done more consultation, 4,000 parents across the province, parents, groups, as I said, public health officials, um, the police, academics, we have done that research and okay. that's the input, that's the change that uh, between 2010 and now. This time. Thank you so much actually. Uh, but um, I should mention at this point, even after so much consultations and those all positive, you know, inputs and those kind of things, still uh, a huge portion of Ontarians, uh, so far our knowledge, uh, they are not quite happy with the curriculum. Uh, that is the impression. And I'm sure you are aware about that uh, aspect as well. So um, what do you think, from your perspective, uh, this kind of confusions or misconceptions are coming from? So um, I'm very aware that there are some parents who are concerned about the, uh, the curriculum. Um, there are also many, many parents who are supportive and they want their children to get this information. Um, what we have done is we have created materials in seven different languages and there will be more languages. We've put the material online. We've created documents that show the myths, some of the untruths and then the facts, what's actually in the curriculum. So what we're trying to do is to provide the real information. This curriculum will not be implemented until September 2015, so yeah. this, this coming September. Mm -hmm. There will be uh, training for teachers in the spring. So between now and the fall, parents have lots of time to get the information about what's actually in the curriculum. And our experience is when parents see what's in the curriculum and they realize the, that a lot of what is in the curriculum is already being taught. It's not, you know, it's not like we don't have health and physical education curriculum now, we do. And um, then once they understand what is being taught, then many parents are, uh, are they will come approving forward. Of it. Yes. But uh, is it only from the parents, that kind of group or? How do you mean? This kind of misconceptions or the, uh, I mean, the confusions that come from uh, the parental groups only or, or from di different other segments of the society? Like, um, well, it's, it's mostly, uh, I, I mean, I can't tell you who's going to the rallies and I don't know if everybody who is opposed has children okay. in the school system. Mm -hmm. um, what I do know is that there are some people who want to create um, opposition because it's a political issue for them. It so, is. you know, they, they're, uh, they don't like liberals and so they don't want uh, this curriculum. So they I make it know. a liberal versus conservative issue, which oh, is, yeah. um, you know, that's not what it is. This is a human issue. This is uh, about making our children safe. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of what is going on. But I, you know, I believe most parents want the best for their children and they just want to be reassured that what is being taught in school mm -hmm. is based on evidence and it's based on research and that politicians don't write curriculum. You know, they, parents don't want to think that politicians would be writing curriculum exactly. because we're not experts mm -hmm. and we don't. Politicians don't write the curriculum. They don't. I didn't write the curriculum. No. It's, it's experts in the field. Just as we have experts in mathematics and science and mm -hmm. geography, they're writing the curriculum in those areas. 
the same goes for the health and physical education curriculum. And it's about healthy relationships, you know? It's about helping children from an early age to understand what's okay and what's not okay, how we interact with each other and how we treat each other with respect. Yeah, uh, though it's not, it is political, but again, politicians are not making this, but uh, when you were the uh, education minister, yes. back in 2010? Yes, was? 2006 yeah. to 2010, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in that regime. And so um, you had some positive, uh, I mean, kind of initiatives to promote that kind of thing. So this time, hopefully, maybe it's gonna be implemented. And uh, one very common concern, that is, uh, what you think the curriculum, the changes in this, uh, I mean, in this new curriculum, the changes, uh, those are really age specific. That, that's the concern we have been hearing for the mm -hmm. last few months mm -hmm. from our community people. And, and, and that's very important to all of the educators in the province, that, that um, children are given information that they're ready to understand, you know. And okay. some, of, some of what's in the curriculum is information for teachers in the, in the case of children asking questions. So, um, you know, children ask all sorts of questions and children, students are at all different levels of, uh, of maturation. Yeah. And so we need to make sure that, that teachers have the information that they can provide to students as well. Uh, just one uh, complimentary question that's coming in my mind that is, uh, Canada is so much multicultural yes. and in some communities, including our own, even the uh, uttering the word sexual education, those kind of things is kind of taboo. Still, mm -hmm. it's so much like that. So the first question was like, you think it is age specific? And now um, it comes to me that, uh, is it like culture specific in broader sense, Canadian culture, if um, you say? I would say no. No. You know, we don't, we, do, we can't write curriculum in Ontario for one specific community because... No, in general. We have so many communities, Yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to write, um, the, the people in the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. have to write curriculum that can be uh, implemented across the across system for system. everybody. And um, what my concern is that we have to make sure that all children, because we do have a diverse culture, so whether children um, are uh, from an English background or a French background or a Bengali, Bengali. background or a, Indiana, an Indian or background, a Portuguese, whatever, Greek, whatever background they're from, whatever their skin color, whether they're brown or whether they're black or whether they're white, they, they have to see themselves reflected in the same way. And I know homosexuality is one of the issues that, uh, that is. people uh, are concerned about. In the same way, children come from different family configurations. Some children live in a family with one mom and one dad. Some children live in a family with a grandparent. Some children live in a family with one mother or one father. Some children live in a family with two mothers or two fathers. Well, thank you so much because, uh, I mean, if I get it in a right manner that it tries to cover, it tried it best, it's, it's best to cover the whole diverse exactly. thing. And, and, and just on that, you know, I think, I think it's important for people to know that I know people are saying, well, it's Kathleen Wynne because she's a liberal and because she's a lesbian. Somehow this is her agenda. And I, I just need parents to know that I didn't write the curriculum. You know, yeah. this, isn't, this isn't my curriculum. This is a curriculum for the province written by people who understand children and want to keep them safe. Yeah. So their perspective have been taken into consideration in a very careful manner. Absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> our last concern uh, for now, uh, recently you released an action plan against, against sexual violence. So our question is like, or humble asking to you, uh, uh, is there anything to do with that, with the new curriculum? I mean, is there any interconnection between there these There is, two? and in fact, it's a very good question because our Sexual um, Violence and Action Plan actually included uh, the introduction of the new physical and health education curriculum because okay. um, in order for children to grow up being able to say no or to be able to say yes mm -hmm. for you know a relationship or uh, a particular uh, interaction, they need to have a good sense of themselves and they need to understand what's safe and what's not safe and where they where they can um, how they can keep themselves uh, protected. So 
very much part of our sexual violence action plan is to have curriculum that helps children from an early age understand what a healthy relationship is mm -hmm. and understand how to protect themselves. So these are complementary in that They're aspect. They're complementary, absolutely. And this is fundamental. Mm -hmm. This having, uh, having good education in the early years is fundamental mm -hmm. to uh, children being able to uh, have healthy relationships later. And you know, Families are the first teachers, and I understand that. They're the first and most important teachers for their children. But these are difficult subjects sometimes for parents to talk about with their children. Exactly. And sometimes it's difficult for children to ask questions of their parents. And so in Ontario, for many, mm -hmm. many years, the school has had a role to play in, uh, in that education. Uh, thank you so much. And after listening to everything, my last um, kind of concern <clears throat> on behalf of the community. Uh, anal sex, then masturbation, then uh, I went through <clears throat> uh, just the highlight of the mm -hmm. features which are included here and six types of sexual orientations and everything mm -hmm. is there. It's very comprehensive though I mm -hmm. must say, mm -hmm. that appeared to me. But uh, do you think it's a little bit more revolutionary at this stage, the whole thing? Well. No, only because the the issues that are uh, laid out in the curriculum, mm -hmm. and some of those are in teacher prompts, and what the teacher prompts are, those are information that the teachers have if they're asked a question. So they're not necessarily going to be talking about uh, all of those issues with the kids, but if they're asked about masturbation, if they're asked about anal sex, if they're asked about oral sex, they will have the opportunity to, uh, to give those answers. But some of those subjects, like, mm -hmm. like oral sex, for example, yeah. we know that young people in grades 7, 8, 9, they 10, it. they are involved in involved. those activities. And so what we know from the research, and again to go back to the research, is that if children have more information about what's safe and what's not safe, they're more likely to avoid getting sexual, sexually transmitted infections, they're more likely to avoid early pregnancy, they're more likely to avoid some of those risky behaviors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people say you're giving kids this information and that means they're going to go out and do these things, actually the reverse is true. By giving children the, this information, that actually means they may think twice and they may not take it, they may not engage in those activities. Okay, and uh, one last debate I would like to mention. Uh, from some corners, um, it, uh, I could see it in, the, in some media and in some social media and um, in some other areas that, that uh, the sexually transmitted diseases, mm -hmm. which is very important area to address, uh, that has been rather neutralized by this kind of curriculum, the importance yes. of, that's a huge debate. Well, and that's the thing. Um, we want to do everything we can to avoid Mm -hmm. um, people contracting sexually transmitted diseases. And so what we know from other jurisdictions, and we're behind, we're playing, we're catching up to other jurisdictions. We know that we can avoid kids getting sexually transmitted diseases by giving them more information. So okay. that's so what that's this curriculum is about. Yeah. Yeah, so Honorable Premier, it's really our pleasure, it was our pleasure to talk to you. Once again, I am thanking you on behalf you. of Bangla Television Canada viewers. Uh, and our community people definitely will be benefited from whatever you said on the total thank uh, you. curriculum. Thank you. Well, and I hope parents will have an opportunity to look at the material yeah. and get, uh, get the information. One thing I didn't say is that um, if parents look at the material and they read it and then they're still uncomfortable, they can talk to their teacher, they can talk to their principal. and on a case-by-case -case basis, they can withdraw their children for sections of the, of the curriculum. I don't advise that because uh, the class will be having a discussion and that, that child will be withdrawing. withdrawn, but, but it's still that is a right that parents have in this province and have had for many years. Well, thank you so thank much you. once thank again, you. thanking you. Thank you very much, appreciate it. dot com slash Bangla Television Canada Amadir Facebook Tikana Bangla Television er update jante Facebook e follow koro Paltu 
কুমার শিকদার বাংলা ভাষী কেন্দ্রীয় ব্যারিস্টার ইমিগ্রেশন পার্সোনাল ইনজুরি ক্রিমিনাল ল রিয়েল এস্টেট সহ যে কোনো বিষয়ে আইনগত পরামর্শের জন্য নির্ভরযোগ্য ও বিশ্বস্ত বাংলা মিডিয়া বাংলা বই পত্রিকা গানের সিডি নাটক ও সিনেমার বিপুল সমাহার ড্যানফোর্ড ও ভিক্টোরিয়া পার্ক এলাকায় বাংলা মিডিয়ায় সাদর আমন্ত্রণ থ্রি থাউজেন্ড ড্যানফোর্ড এভিনিউ টরন্টো একটি স্বপ্নিল বাড়ি একটি লাভজনক ব্যবসা একটি নির্ঝঞ্ঝাট কন্ডোমিনিয়াম আপনার এমন সব স্বপ্ন পূরণে অভিজ্ঞ রিয়েল এস্টেট এজেন্ট শাহজাদ একটি বিশ্বস্ত নাম বাংলা টেলিভিশন ডট নেট আমাদের ওয়েবসাইট পৃথিবীর যে কোনো প্রান্ত থেকে যে কোনো সময় আমাদের অনুষ্ঠান দেখতে লগ অন করুন চলচ্চিত্রে রবীন্দ্রনাথের গান রবীন্দ্রসঙ্গীত শিল্পী সংস্থা ক্যানাডার বিশেষ আয়োজন তিরিশে মে শনিবার সন্ধ্যা সাতটা স্থান এস ওয়াল্টার স্টুয়ার্ট পাবলিক লাইব্রেরি অডিটোরিয়াম ওয়ান সেভেন্টি মেমোরিয়াল পার্ক অ্যাভিনিউ ইস্ট ইয়র্ক টোরন্টো কক্সওয়েল অ্যান্ড মর্টেমার ইন্টারসেকশন পর্যাপ্ত ফ্রি পার্কিং এর ব্যবস্থা রয়েছে ক্যানাডা প্রবাসী রবীন্দ্র সঙ্গীত শিল্পীদের পরিবেশনা শুভেচ্ছা দর্শনী দশ ডলার মাত্র বিধির বাঁধন কাটবে তুমি যোগাযোগ ফোর ওয়ান সিক্স এইট ফাইভ সিক্স ফাইভ এইট জিরো টু তিরিশে মে শনিবার সন্ধ্যা সাতটা চলচ্চিত্রে রবীন্দ্রনাথের গান নিয়ে রবীন্দ্রসঙ্গীত শিল্পী সংস্থা ক্যানাডার বিশেষ আয়োজন প্রচার সহযোগী বাংলা টেলিভিশন ক্যানাডা ফেসবুক ডট কম স্লাশ বাংলা টেলিভিশন কানাডা আমাদের ফেসবুক ঠিকানা বাংলা টেলিভিশনের আপডেট জানতে ফেসবুকে ফলো করুন
তো মাতাল জুটে আমার স্বপ্ন হিরে নাচে মাতাল জুটে যত মাতাল জুটে জানা চাই দর্শক এই ছিল আমাদের আজকের আয়োজন আপনাদের সবাইকে অনেক ধন্যবাদ আমাদের সাথে থাকবার জন্যে বাংলা টেলিভিশন ক্যানাডার পরবর্তী আয়োজন ঠিক এক পক্ষকাল পরে একই সময়ে একই চ্যানেলে দেখবার আমন্ত্রণ রইল সে পর্যন্ত আপনারা সবাই ভালো থাকুন সুস্থ থাকুন আর বাঙালির সাথে বাংলা বলুন